Well, we have almost made it. We are just a few days from celebrating the birth of Christ together. But in the meantime, we're still in this season of waiting, Advent, as we're anxiously awaiting the birth of the Messiah. I imagine many of you are like me. Um, you're running around frantically, trying to finish all the things that seem like they just can't wait. You know, getting all of the food ready for Christmas Eve to be able to put in and to make that meal for Christmas Day. Getting all of the cookies together, making sure you have all of the presents, making sure that they are all wrapped, making sure all the Christmas cards out and you've gone to all the parties, all of the to-dos. And this time can get really overwhelming. When you're out at the stores, you start to see people's anxiety rising. They are a little bit more angry, a little bit more tense, rushing around to get through things and not really caring about the people that might get in their way. This definitely is a time where love can't wait. On Sunday, many people heard the story from Matthew. We often hear the birth story thinking about Mary and her journey, the angels, the shepherds, but a lot of times Joseph gets overlooked. Joseph, the earthly father of Jesus, his story is shared in Matthew chapter 1, starting in verse 18. I want to read it for you. It says, This is how the birth of Jesus Christ took place. When Mary, his mother, was engaged to Joseph, before they were married, she became pregnant by the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man. Because he didn't want to humiliate her, he decided to call off their engagement quietly. As he was thinking about this, an angel from the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife because the child she carries was conceived by the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you will call him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Now all of this took place so that what the Lord had spoken through the prophet would be fulfilled. Look, a virgin will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did just as an angel from God commanded and took Mary as his wife. But he didn't have relations with her until she gave birth to a son. And Joseph called him Jesus. The story of Joseph is one of those that we often read, but probably overlook, or we rush through it to get to the story, the birth of Jesus. In our nativity sets, we have Joseph standing there looking down at this baby boy in a proud way. But what we kind of skip over is the way in which Joseph came to this moment. You see, Joseph, it says, was a righteous man. Joseph could have chosen to follow the law, to keep living into that righteousness of, of being able to dismiss Mary completely because she was pregnant. And that would have been his right to do so. He was in the right to dismiss her. And he could have done that in a very public way. But instead, Joseph chose love. Joseph chose love in a way in which he could know. He couldn't even imagine what God was doing. So Joseph chose to love by thinking about quietly dismissing Mary, trying not to give her any disgrace or any punishment that might come because she was Mary or she was pregnant, even though she was to marry Joseph. And so Joseph decided that love can't wait. But God wasn't finished with Joseph yet because God could do more than Joseph could even imagine, could even dream about. And so God appears to Joseph through a messenger in a dream. And he says to not be afraid, to not be afraid, to love in a new way, to let the law go and to follow what God was calling him to do, which was to take Mary as his wife, which was to claim this son conceived by the Holy Spirit to be his and name him Jesus. 
Joseph couldn't imagine loving in that way. Joseph couldn't imagine the way in which God was calling him to love in this big, extraordinary way. All Joseph could imagine was loving in a way that would just quietly dismiss Mary. But instead, he chose to not be afraid. He realized that love, God's love, could not wait. And so he chose to make Mary his wife and to claim Jesus as his son and to name him Jesus. It makes me think about the ways in which we might be called to love, to love in a different way. When we look around our world, we see that there is so much hurt, so much pain. Last night, we had our Blue Christmas service, and those who were gathered there got to experience a beautiful time of coming as they are into this season and to experience Emmanuel, God with us in a different, quieter way where God enters into their pain. And I was thinking about the ways in which God enters into all of our lives during this moment, but how we often get so caught up in the to-do list and trying to get things done and making sure that we don't miss uh, getting all the presents under the tree and loving in that way that we often miss the way that God might be calling us to love during this season. Love in a bigger way. Love in a way that we could never imagine. Maybe it's just opening our eyes up to those who are around us. Maybe it's seeing somebody at the store who is having a hard time. Maybe it's calling somebody who you know has gone through a difficult season, has lost a loved one, has been sick. Maybe it is going and just sitting and being present with someone. It's not always about the gifts under the tree, right? It's about presence. God with us is God coming and being present with us. God can give us all the presence in the world. God can give us all of the gifts and the blessings, but the true gift of love is Emmanuel, God with us. God entering into our story. God meeting us right where we are. And God tells us to not be afraid. Do not be afraid to love in this new way this way that I'm calling you, this way that is bigger than you are, this way that is bigger than you could even ask or imagine. Love cannot wait. Love is part of what we are called to do. It is a foundation of who we are called to be. Nadia Bowles Weber wrote this, there are messengers of love all around. And again and forever they say, do not be afraid. For in the heart of God, there is enough love to cast out fear. It is from this heart we come, and to this heart we return. And it beats around us and is shown in the shimmering love that absolutely covers this world. There is enough love to cast out fear, and it's everywhere. How can we love in a new way this season? In a way that casts out fear in a way that shares God's goodness and hope and joy and peace to those who are in need? How can we love in a way that is bigger than ourselves? Joseph gives us that example, that example of how to love and then how to go beyond the love that we know how to give into God's great love. God's love that goes beyond borders. God's love that goes beyond the norms, the expectations, the societal pressures. God's love that loves in a way that is bigger than we could even imagine. That is the kind of love that we are called to do. That is the kind of love that we are called to give out into the world. So as we near Christmas, these last few days, this final push, let us choose to love, to love in a way that goes beyond what we ever could think we could do. A love that sees beyond the happy facade that people put on or sees beyond the anxiety, the, the love that casts out fear during this time. Let us settle down into God's love, that God's love that is with us is greater than any gift that we could have. And then let us love in the same way, in a way that is greater than any gift that we find under the tree, 
in a way that brings hope and love and light and goodness into our world. Love cannot wait, and we shouldn't either.